They are the insiders, Chris Johnston, Pierre Lebron, and Darren Dreger. Well, gentlemen, as first reported a couple of weeks ago, it's now official. Marty Walsh, the new executive director of the NHLPA. So, Chris, what do you think this means for the league moving forward? This is a big change, and there is a mammoth task ahead of Marty Walsh as he looks to, you know, take over for Donald Fear, but also to, to engage the NHL Players Association. One of the things that stood out to the members of the selection committee that backed this hiring was his ability to communicate. And that's something that I think is going to be really important here when he formally takes over for fear in the middle of next month. And, you know, there's still not a lot known about Marty Walsh. He was in Florida for All-Star Weekend, obviously got to know the 10 players on that selection committee, but he doesn't know a lot of the membership. And the expectation is soon after he takes the post, he'll be out uh, traveling around the league, getting to know his players, getting to know the union as he puts his stamp on things. All right, to the trade front now. And Darren, it's pretty clear the Blues are sellers, but are we now getting the indication that they may be listening to offers for more than merely the guys up front? Yeah, no doubt about that, Gino, and you're right. I mean, the St. Louis Blues already have been active in making that deal with the New York Rangers, sending Tarasenko to the Rangers. We know that there's action around Ryan O'Reilly and Ivan Barbashev, but there is some consideration to moving a defenseman. It is possible when you look at the list here, you're looking at a list of guys that all have long-term contracts. And we highlight Colton Pareko, not just because he's a right shot D, but primarily because of the deal and also because he's drawing the most interest among those defense. It's a good group. Justin Falk, Tori Krug, Nick Gladdy, all of those men have no trade clauses. So it is a little bit complicated, but it's also very possible St. Louis moves a defenseman. Pierre, the Habs facing a vastly different set of circumstances at this year's deadline compared to this time last season. Yeah, it's setting up to be really different. You think about a year ago and the quality returns uh, that they got on, on Toffoli, on Ben Sherrod, on, on Brett Kulak. Uh, you know, it was a really good trade deadline period for the Habs and, uh, and Kent Hughes. But it's just shaping up differently so far. I mean, you think about their, their two most marketable trade pieces, if you will, Joel Edmondson and Sean Monaghan, they've both been out. And Monaghan in particular, who was playing so well before he got injured, his, he's had a delayed return. They hope he'll finally be back sometime next week, but teams are nervous about how long he's been out. Same with Joel Edmondson, his recurring back issues. You know, there was some interest in him, but now teams are wary about that. He's got another year in his deal. It's not the end of the world if the Habs can't move him. Then there's Evgeny Dadanoff and Jonathan Druin. The reality is there still isn't a lot of interest, if at all, in Jonathan Druin. Dadanoff is a little different. Uh, starting to hear some teams maybe say, hey, if we don't get the, the top players on our list, maybe we'll come back and call you a closer to March 3rd. Dadanoff has played a lot better of late. We've spoken about the trade fatigue starting at home surrounding the Jacob Chikrin deal. And Darren, are we now starting to get a hint as to what might be holding things up? Yeah, the fact that even though it's believed that Bill Armstrong, the Arizona Coyotes, want to be creative, they're not willing to take on contracts beyond entry-level contracts. So the perfect scenario for the Coyotes is to get draft picks, to get prospects, and at worst, the player on his entry-level contract. Now, teams have expressed the interest required to make that deal, but they also need some money to move along to make all of the mechanics work and so far that uh, hasn't been the case as far as Arizona is concerned and that's part of the stalemate. Well and in the process of this dregs the, the Coyotes have started something new right the scratch for trade related reasons without a trade coming soon after and I can tell you that there is some disgruntlement out there some agents some in the industry don't like this idea Jacob Chikrin's already sat out three games for the Coyotes Vladislav Gavrikov on Thursday will miss his second game for Columbus. And at this point in time, sources say there's nothing close on either of these players. And so, you know, from a practical standpoint, I don't know what can be done to legislate it. Obviously, teams can make their roster decisions as they see fit. But if one or both of these guys sit till March 3rd, I think we're going to see more conversation on this practice. Pierre, some teams are obviously buyers, other obviously sellers. And that's still others are right there on the bubble. Does that list include the National Predators? Yeah, they've not decided yet what they are, but the clock is ticking. And here's what I would say from making a few calls today is that uh, the next set of games, you know, Thursday night against Boston, this weekend against Florida, and especially Sunday against Minnesota, those are huge games which could impact the trade deadline decisions for the National Predators and GM David Boyle. If they don't get on a heater, like right now, uh, to salvage their playoff chase, I'm told that David Boyle will be ready to listen to almost anyone on his roster if he feels that his team has no chance to make the postseason 
whether that's Duchesne or Johansson or Ekholm or Granlin, I think he'll be in a position to listen on a lot of his players. That's if they don't get on a heater here. We'll see how they respond. They are the insiders, Darren Dreger, Pierre Lebrun, and Chris Johnston.